Have you ever wondered what it's like to work in the fashion industry? To make it as an artist, the hustle behind launching your own label, pursuing a career in music or any other creative industry? Halfstack has been pursuing these stories in print form for the last four years. This fall, we're bringing the inside story to YouTube. We connected with some of Chicago's most iconic creatives to hear their stories and share their journeys with you. We take you behind the scenes and offer candid, personal conversations with people pursuing their dreams. It's not as glamorous as the media would like you to think. We are sharing the raw reality behind making it. In this episode of Making It, we interview Janine Benoit Adams, the founder and stylish woman behind the Chicago startup Ready Pretty. Ready Pretty is a tech fashion brand that is all about making getting ready simpler for its users. All you do is visit their site, tell them your needs, a little about yourself, and the Ready Pretty style experts will email a carefully curated collection of links to full outfits and wardrobe pieces from some of the best online shopping destinations from around the world. The links and the looks you want exactly when you need them at a budget that works for you. The brand's mission is all about giving its users access to the wardrobe that they've always wanted, allowing them to look good and feel great while saving them the time and the headache of trying to find the perfect pieces. The Half Stack team sat down with Janine to talk about her career journey, what it's been like going from the ad world to the startup world that led her to launching the Ready Pretty brand, and what it's really like to run a fashion startup. It's not nearly as pretty or glamorous as you might expect. My name is Janine Benoit Adams and I'm the founder of Ready Pretty. So before I started Ready Pretty, I worked in marketing and advertising my entire career um, for about a decade, which is crazy. Um, I worked on big and small brands, helping them to launch or um, create new products or bring things to market, which I love to do, but I knew um, that I wanted to create something that I really believed in, that helped women, that had some sort of stint in fashion because I'd always had kind of my foot in the door when it came to fashion. So. I'd worked as um, a fashion writer and editor at various publications um, here in Chicago and also nationally. So again, I knew I wanted to do something fashion. It was just a matter of kind of when and, and what would that be. So uh, when I graduated from um, Ohio State, I moved to Chicago to go to grad school and uh, there I'd started working uh, as an intern at uh, Golem Harris, which is an agency here in Chicago on the Florida Department of Citrus, which was my first account ever. Uh, I learned so much from so many incredible people that surrounded me. I'm still friends with a lot of people that, um, you know, we kind of all came up as interns um, at the very young age of 22, trying to make it here in Chicago. Um, but again, I loved, I loved marketing, I loved PR. I moved from Golden Harris to other agencies around Chicago. I worked for a startup out of San Francisco. Um, doing again more tech PR, I did consumer PR, and then before I started Ready Pretty, I was at an agency called Gyro, which um, certainly groomed me into more of a content marketer, um, working mostly on B2B brands. So my experience spans certainly across a variety of clients and industries and topics, and I do think it really prepared me to launch my own business um, because I was able to kind of think through not only an agency mindset, but also a business owner mindset, kind of a client mindset. So that kind of experience for me really helped me in, in shaping what I've done from a marketing perspective with Ready Pretty, but also just from kind of an operational and, and kind of business perspective with Ready Pretty. For me, I have been helping so many of my friends and family with their clothing and style and fashion over the years, and I love to do it. I kind of became known among my friends and family as like, okay, you have somewhere to go, or you hate your style, well talk to Janine, she'll just send you a couple things and you know help you figure it out. So I've been doing it for so long that it seemed almost like a natural progression for me, but I can remember sitting down um, with a very dear friend of mine, Jackie, who was sitting in my living room, she said to me, why don't you do this? Like, why isn't this your thing? Because I had started a clothing line um, years before, just kind of on the side, just to see how it went. And you know, it was a really good learning experience for me, but not what I loved. And Jackie said to me, this is your thing. And I thought, I, it is. Like I've been doing this for so long, there's a business idea here. So I sat down with my husband that night and we sketched out a business plan 
just on a piece of paper and we started throwing out names and I had probably a hundred names listed on the sheet of paper. And my husband and I circled pretty ready and thought, eh, I don't know, like maybe that could be it, maybe not. And then a friend of mine at my office the next day said, ready pretty would be cool, but it doesn't sound right. And I was like, I actually think it does sound right. And we stuck with it. So for me, it was, it had always been kind of a part of who I was. It was just, I think it took a little encouragement from my girlfriend Jackie, from my husband, and and really, at the end of the day, me being like, okay, let's do this um, to, to really bring Ready Pretty to, to fruition. So for me, I've always believed that fashion is transformative. When you look good, you feel good. And I wanted to give that feeling to as many women as possible. I've seen women completely transform, heads up, shoulders back, when they're in an outfit that they feel good in. And I just wanted to bottle that up into a service that I could offer to as many women as I could possibly connect with. So for us, our audience, I always say, is real busy women. Whether you are a working mom, whether you're a stay-at-home mom, whether you don't have kids and you're a working professional, whatever it is, we're all so busy and time-strapped. And oftentimes as women, we are the last on the list. There are so many other people ahead of us that we're trying to help or service or contribute to that we sometimes get the short end of the stick. So I wanted to create this service that allowed us to take the guesswork out of something that we all do every single day and that's get dressed. That's why Ready Pretty was born. I have been told that I am risk averse and I will be the first to admit I am, which is interesting as an entrepreneur because you always hear that as an entrepreneur you have to take risks in life and you have to kind of leap before you look and I certainly do that but I always say I take very calculated risks. So for me, I was extremely nervous to leave a full-time position as a vice president director at the B2B agency of the year here in Chicago. I was very nervous and I had a great job and I loved the people that I worked with, but I wasn't fulfilled. So I worked on Ready Pretty for almost two years on the side before I left, like really left that position because I just was not ready. And everyone in my family, my husband, my friends were like, do it, do it, do it. And I was like, I'll do it when I'm ready to do it. And eventually I got there, but I made sure that a lot of things were in place, like a cushion, a bit of a safety net financially, um, that I had grown a customer base that I felt was loyal and would come back, and I felt like I had plans in place. So all of those things, it took me a while. It wasn't just, I have this great idea, let's quit my job and start this business. Like that wasn't, that wasn't it. And so oftentimes I feel like you don't hear the side from entrepreneurs of, I, really thought about this and really made sure this was right for me and I, I cultivated customers and clientele and developed a really strong business plan before I just left. So the transition for me has been unique. I absolutely love what I do every day. I still do some marketing consulting here and there for businesses and brands um, because I it's kind of my sweet spot. I know I'm good at it. It's a great way for me to kind of supplement uh, what I'm doing with Ready Pretty. Ready Pretty is certainly my focus. Um, but a lot of what we make in Ready Pretty gets reinvested in the business. And I um, needed to still feel comfortable um, financially to be able to do this. So I still do some consulting here and there for brands and businesses that of my choosing that I enjoy working with. I think it keeps me really sharp on the marketing side of things. I can take those learnings and apply them to Ready Pretty. Um, but I have to say, you know, I love the flexibility of my role. I love the newness of, my, of this new role. I'm able to do things that I never in a million years thought I'd be able to do because of this business. Um, I've been able to really get outside of my comfort zone. I think that that's the one thing I can take away from the last you know, several months, I guess over a year now, is I've been more uncomfortable, <laughs> professionally speaking, than I've ever been in my entire career, and it feels good. I mean, it feels scary every day. I'm like biting my nails and taking a big gulp, um, but it's, this feeling of, as cheesy as it sounds, like I'm like living, like it's like I'm doing something that I believe in and that I have heart, I like get chills thinking about it just because I, I feel like you can live in this existence of going to work every day and doing things you know you're supposed to do and check the boxes, but when you get outside that comfort zone and do those things that you're like, I can't believe that just happened, it's the best feeling. And I, I'm lucky enough that I get to experience that on uh, somewhat of a regular basis as, as a business owner. When I first started out, I was doing a lot of the styling myself. Um, 
He was a one-man band, for sure. We've been lucky enough to grow over the last year and a half to where we have stylists around the country that are helping our users look and feel their very best. For me, uh, my creative inspiration, whether that's styling someone or working on our marketing efforts or thinking of messaging or positioning, whatever the case may be, comes from, I think, the mundane. You know, I always been one to look at things I think a little bit different or through a different lens than what other people would think or would look through. So um, it's just that everyday life um, that I find inspiration from, from little to big. Obviously travel certainly is a, is a source of inspiration for me, but I think it's looking at things in a different perspective or a different light. I can tell you I have a three-year-old son who certainly sees things in a different lens and being a mom I think helps you reconsider how you look at normal things in a way that um, maybe your three-year-old looks at them that makes you think of things differently. So uh, my source of inspiration really comes from from so many different areas, from the mundane to some of the more exciting things like, like traveling with my husband and my family. So I'd say the person who's probably had the most influence on my career um, has been my mom. <laughs> uh, I watched her when I was four or five years old go back to school to get her master's degree um, while working a high up position um, at different corporations um, when I was younger. She's just a boss and she's certainly an example of being a great wife and mom, but just like <laughs> taking names and kicking butt and just being a really distinguished and respected professional woman in the workforce. Um, she's held super high up positions and I feel like from a young age I wanted to be her and mirror her and I'm hopeful that She's proud of me of what I've done and, and what I continue to do. So hands down, my mom's number one, my, my biggest professional influence in my life. I've been lucky enough to have a lot of really great bosses and supervisors in my career. I've had some, some not so good ones either, but I've learned from them um, on how I would not treat uh, my employees or, or you know people that I work with. But on the good ones front, I learned how to share my experience and my ideas and how to be thoughtful and respectful, how to get clients to trust you and all those things that you want as a professional. So my old boss at, at my most recent marketing agency um, was one of those people and uh, taught me a lot about presentation and gaining client trust and staying very, um, very even keeled in very stressful and hectic situations, which I think is a skill that every business owner needs to have. Um, every professional needs to have, to be honest. You'll never see me fly off the handle. I don't care if the house is on fire. Um, and I have a lot, I think, to owe to, to my boss at my previous agency. I've had, lucky enough, a lot of well, women in my life who've helped me along the way. Um, again, another boss at one of, my, one of my older agencies was just such a source of education and learning when it came to um, marketing and public relations and social media she was just that person who i just could soak up like a sponge every single thing she did because it was just so smart um, and insightful uh, so i certainly have her to thank in the way that i think about marketing and, and advertising and she was just a champion of mine and as i look at the women that i employ now at ready pretty i want to be that same champion and i want it to feel like an environment where we get stuff done but even more than that, we care and, and you know we have an environment that's fun to work at and you feel like you're learning all the time. You feel like you've got these people above you that can help you to grow in your career, both professionally and even personally. So um, I hope that you know the folks below me, I hope that I'm passing on kind of the mentorship that I got uh, that years ago. I can pass it on to the people that you know are kind of looking up to me as the next generation. In terms of goals, Customer acquisition is my number one priority right now in the near term. Um, just continuing to expand our reach and touch for women across the US and even internationally. Um, we've actually worked with women overseas, which is super exciting. We trust women in every state here in the United States, which is exciting, but we obviously want more and faster and better. Um, eventually, we're gonna roll out Ready Handsome. I've already purchased the URL, which is super exciting. That's certainly a longer term play for us, but we get it all the time of our users asking, do you guys help, can you guys help my husband or can you help my boyfriend or significant other? And the answer is yes. Um, we just haven't kind of formalized those plans yet and that'll be down the road. Um, we are eventually gonna roll out kind of a longer term program with small businesses across the US. We're getting ready to test it here in Chicago. Um, but really, I just see such an opportunity with a lot of the amazing boutiques 
and store owners here in my own backyard who I think are missing an opportunity to do more online. And since our entire service offering is, is an online offering, I'd, I'd like to bring them into the fold as much as I can and help them to expand their users and their client bases through um, the program and initiative that we're getting to ready to roll out. So certainly there are a lot of exciting things in the works um, from Ready Handsome to our small business owners and boutiques initiative to um, just more and faster expansion. But really right now it's how can we continue to connect and help as many women as we can, not only here in Chicago, but across the United States. The fashion industry right now is changing every single day. I mean, we hear on the news more and more brick and mortar shops are closing day in and day out. And that's certainly alarming for brands big and small. So you have to innovate if you're in this industry, which is why we created Ready Pretty, focusing solely on that online offering and digital delivery for our users. What I'm really excited about is our small business offering that we're getting ready to unveil here in Chicago. We're gonna test it out here and hopefully roll that out nationwide. If you are a brick and mortar shop and you haven't focused on that kind of digital delivery and online experience for your customers, you're just missing out and you're missing opportunity to increase revenue. So what I'd like to do is kind of help our small business owners and our boutique owners to better service the online user through our platform. If you're not changing and kind of adapting to this new digital landscape, then you're kind of remaining stale and your users are gonna go elsewhere. So for me, that's probably our biggest innovation of this year. We're so new, but I saw this as an opportunity that we just needed to jump on in order to help not only these boutique owners, but also really help our users to find um, and source new and interesting pieces that they wouldn't normally find um, in kind of the big box stores that they're used to going to. I think in this world of being a small business owner, you can't be afraid to put yourself out there. Uh, you know, when I started Ready Pretty, I was working full time at my agency job and I was almost, I don't want to say afraid to tell people that I had started this business, but it was like, if I put it out there, then it's out there. And I was nervous to do that, which I look back and I'm like, I can't believe it's just not even in my nature, but I was for whatever, for any of the variety of reasons. Um, so, I think the biggest obstacle for me was just saying, no, this is it. Like, this is what I'm doing and getting over that like lump in your throat, scared feeling of like, I'm going to put this out there and then it's like really going to be out there and then I have to really do something with it. So I think that was a big obstacle for me, but I overcame it because I just started to read all these articles and all these stories and hear, hear from other entrepreneurs who were like, you got to get over that. Like, you'll never do anything of value if you kind of are afraid to tell people and to show people what you're doing. So I got over that pretty quickly and now it's kind of like open book. This is the good, the bad, and the ugly of what it means to be, to be a business owner. I also think, I heard no, I've heard no a lot. And I know that's like everyone says that, but like you do. <laughs> like I've heard no a lot, whether that's with media that I've pitched to, whether that's to users that perhaps weren't happy with the service initially. I, I've heard the negative feedback. I've heard a lot of positive, but you hear that negative, right? I've heard no in terms of people being interested in opportunities to work with us or to collaborate with us because we're too small or, you know, we're still growing. Lots of no's, like no, no, no. But you get that one yes, and it's the best feeling in the world because it's different when it's yours. It's so different when it's an idea that you sat at your kitchen table to think about and it became it becomes something and then you put that in front of someone else and they say yes it's the best feeling so for all the no's that i've received and i've received a ton of them in our short year and a half of being up for me it's getting that one yes that makes all the difference and i i guess you look back now and you think all those no's it, it builds character as my mother would say you know it builds character and it just makes you a little bit tougher and that next no a little bit easier to take and that next yes the best feeling that you could ever imagine you know this one's super early on um but i just think it's what every entrepreneur feels um which is something you'll never get to experience again and i think that's having the first non-family or friend <laughs> purchase our service. I am thinking of her right now. She actually has been one of our most loyal users um, since she
she did her first purchase pretty pretty, but you know, it's one thing to throw up an online site and have your mom purchase your service or have your best friend purchase your service. When you see a name come through that you've never heard of before and you're like, whoa, how did you get here? How did you hear that? Like, it's the best feeling because you've created something that someone wants for no other reason than it's a great service, it's a great price, it's a great offering, and they're excited to try your service. So for me, we've had a lot of great moments um, over the last year and a half from great press and great media to awesome collaborations to partnering with really cool people. But that first order that was not someone who I knew their middle name was exciting for me, for sure. So before I launched Ready Pretty, as I mentioned, I worked at an agency where I was in a fairly top position at that firm. And I can remember there was a meeting um, that happened every Monday with the top people. And it was about a, eight folks in a room. And it was myself and a bunch of white men. And me, the female woman, you know, woman of color, it was certainly a difference. But I always, I never felt um, any sort of difference really other than what you could see. Um, I'm a firm believer that you, your ideas and your thoughts are what should people should judge you on. I've been lucky enough, and I know that's not the case, but I was lucky enough in that setting that people regarded me as bright and smart and a contributor. Um, and I, honestly, in my entire career, I've been lucky enough to have that kind of positioning because I have really worked hard um, to be sure that I portrayed someone who had bright ideas and who was a leader and who was a team player and who um, could bring something to the table. Unfortunately, I know that's not the case, um, but that's my experience. I will say, you know, as a business owner today, I think it's so important that um, we as women, um, we as women of color, we as people, honestly, um, need to support each other. You know, I, I'm a firm believer that when one of us wins, we all win. And I, I think I mean that more so for, for women um, here in this moment. But I am lucky enough to be surrounded by so many incredible women doing so many incredible things uh, who all want to see us all kind of come up together. Uh, and I think if we can do more of that in, in kind of our world today, the, the better off that we'd be. So I think it's hugely important that we continue to support and high five and bring up kind of the last one in line, it's the first place in line in order for us all to succeed. There's a, there's a big enough piece of this pie for all of us and I'm, I'm hopeful that the people around me, the people that I don't know, the people that are trying to do really interesting and cool things can have you know a small bite of that pie. Uh, so I, as I said, I'm risk averse, I'll be the first to admit it. Um, so for me, it was a lot of planning went into Ready Pretty. It was a lot of thought, maybe even too much thought. I know you hear stories of those entrepreneurs who are like, I did it, I got up and I did it and that was it and I never looked back. That was just not me. I was terrified. Uh, to take the leap, but I knew I had something interesting and I knew um, that I would look back one day if I didn't do it and be like, I can't believe I didn't do that. Um, so my advice for someone considering kind of taking that leap would be to look before you leap. Um, make a plan, put together a business plan, put together a timeline, make sure your finances are in order, make sure you have a bit of a cushion um, for sure, just so as things pop up, you can take a little bit of a breather and not feel like you're backed into a corner. Some people do really well being backed into a corner, um, and at times I can be that person, but if I could have a little bit of a cushion, I would prefer. If I could have a plan in place to execute on, um, that's where I think entrepreneurs can really succeed. So my advice would be to look before you leave. But to learn more about our services and our packages, certainly visit www.readypretty.com. Definitely follow along on Instagram at Ready Pretty. That's where we share a bunch of fashion tips and advice and inspiration. I always say we're trying to put out good vibes. So definitely at readypretty.com to kind of keep up with what we're doing.